21st century Africa, a continent undergoing great change and finally seizing control of its image. But it's been a long battle. A hundred years ago, photography was a colonial tool. Prince George had a royal welcome from the great Zulu nation. The time has come for the independent African state. In the post-colonial euphoria, photographers like Malik Sidibe captured the new confidence. But elsewhere, the narrative was of a corrupt, unmanageable continent, often reduced to just one image. Now, a new generation is using photography to celebrate, to question, and represent a continent on the rise. Every time I lift up a camera and do an important assignment, there's always that voice that says, you're not good enough. You're not going to make it in this profession. I've tried to ignore it, to ignore that voice. But it's the very voice that has pushed me to do better every day, to push myself to do better every day. What? I'm gonna photograph it from here. So you're gonna be here. Great. Works. Aha, I like that. Don't change, please. <laughs> Is he in the air? Is he in the air? Yes. My parents used to buy newspapers and all the stories that were of of black people in the newspapers, they were all negative. Either pictures of extreme poverty or black people fighting, just everything negative. My dream was to be an advertising photographer and take pictures of beautiful things. Uh -huh. Black people feeling good about themselves, dressed well, but it was a picture that the apartheid regime didn't want to show to the world. This is it. They wanted to paint black people as barbarics. I was 22 years old. I'd just been thrown out of photo school for being a black woman pursuing a career, which was seen as inappropriate. I ended up now having to work night shift at the Star taking pictures of news events, covering all the horrors of Joburg. I was just so sick of photographing all those negative things. But in the early 90s, something new was happening in South Africa. We were full of energy and exploded with our dreams and ambitions onto the street. We wanted to be, to express, to create dance, music and fashion. We were the better generation, so I took photographs of what was happening around me. I was always with these people clubbing, and I'll take pictures of what this culture had produced. They would respond to my camera because they could see that I was also feeling whatever they were feeling. The people in those photographs are now the stars of today. Some had served time, others had struggled to make ends meet, but today they walk the red carpets in South Africa. Their records go platinum. Is their faces on TV? Dewo is one of the people that has captured us from from our beginning stages to date. You know when what I mean? Was, when he was still buying a loaf of bread, and then he would slice it up and post <laughs> all the slices so that it doesn't get rotten, and then the, that loaf must last him a month. 
Now, almost two decades after South Africa became free, I want to revisit those photographs and see how far we've come as a nation and understand my own journey. Ephraim Mudingwana, he's a good friend of mine. We met many years ago when we were still trying to find our identity in the new South Africa. Then we were still aspiring, you know, to, to achieve greatness. <laughs> yes. We're going to do crispy white Egyptian cotton. And then with the polka dot, inky red and white. Yes. And to give that color. Color. Yeah. Close your eyes, Ify. Close your eyes, close your eyes. No way! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Here yeah, you're just you expressing your love for creating clothes and just being. And this one you were still Man. a model, yeah. Yes, right? and I was starting. Yeah. This one was my first work first ever. Work. I yeah. actually painted the whole outfit. Oh. You used like a spray paint. Yes. I remember you used like a spray paint. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> we are the generation that changed South Africa. Young, energetic, black boys and girls coming up and taking over. Look where we are all together. All yeah, of us. All, all of, of us. us. All that gang. That is why I've looked at a lot of my work and I've decided like it would just be great to just revisit all the people that I photographed then and celebrate my people and celebrate my generation. Yep. Yeah? Yeah? Wow. Nice one. <laughs> We wanted to be seen to be going to this posh nightclubs and to be popping champagne. Yeah. We wanted to work for it and we wanted to create that moment for us. And then here we are. Yeah. Today I can I, I'm driving one of the best cars best in the cars, world. Yeah. It's a BMW 645 convertible. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. You live in the suburbs, you pay your bills, Bulls, you pay your yeah. taxes. No one is forcing me to do all that. That's the lifestyle that we wanted to do. Pave the way whereby all politicians they realize you know what let's forget about uh, burning houses and throwing stones this culture is so over that it's all about moving forward and living a, a livelihood that we all want to embrace everybody ah. <laughs> we all had the same the well, spark we you had know, that, yeah. we're all like sort of suppressed yeah and then when that lead just came off we went <laughs> all of us we just went <laughs> Same time. Same you know time. I mean? Even our own black people, our own parents, they didn't think that we can achieve this in such a period of time. We were dreaming too much. People were thinking, all we're talking about is just a dream. We're going home, we're going to Lekhachen, my village. I come here for inspiration, and I'll never start any big project without coming here. My dad passed away when I was 15, and my mother passed away in yeah, 2000. Yeah. She hasn't really enjoyed any of my successes in terms of photography, you know, my career. I know it's just gonna be like an empty house. My bedroom is there, yes, and, but for the fact that spending a night at my mother's house is, yeah, it means a lot to me. Back then when I was small, be sleeping and you have to be woken up. There will be noise and the banging on the door and all those things. The cops used to demand that my parents produce their IDs. My dad will behave like a kid. For an intruder to come and not value him as a person, it used to, it used to hurt me as a child. This is the person that I respect. This is the person that tells me that I should stand up for myself. But yet, when he's confronted with, a, like, with the humiliation, he becomes vulnerable. You question yourself like, 
Is it worth the respect? I could have stood up, you know, and just said no. I am sick of it. We are sick of it. Sick of being portrayed like like barbarians, you know, like we're barbaric, we don't, we don't, we, we, we don't, like we lack class. It was just stolen from us. And I think that's why if you are blessed enough to have the opportunity, that privilege to show off your success with luxurious things, do it. Your parents never had the opportunity to do it. To summarize my career in the last 10 years, I'd say there's never been a summer. In fact, in 11 years, there's never been a summer without a DJ Clear hit. It was very unique in the sense that we'd never had locally produced dance songs before. And Kwaito is just about celebrating ourselves, celebrating our struggles, glorifying poverty, because that's all people have known. It's mostly sung in our language, so people can relate. It was fresh. And because now post-independence, we could celebrate, now we had reason to celebrate. So guys could sing about parties, guys could sing about whatever, because, you know, in our minds we were free. <gasps> and I didn't know you, you take this thing off, so I was just new in the game. You know? and people who are not used to dressing up, you know, they'll always want to show off. The, the day they decide that, to, you know, they're gonna dress up, yeah. they'll even leave the tag there. This is embarrassing. No, now you know, you know better. Ah, no, don't, ah, <laughs> now you know don't better. touch me. Then you were still. <laughs> we're gonna do another shoot. We've lost the jacket because we've got nothing to prove now. We're gonna lose the head. Just you as yourself. We are at Get Rough Studios. For me, it was a pivotal moment in my career to actually get to record some of my early works here. Oh, Unfortunately, Lads. music has color you ready? in this country. There's black music, there's Indian music, there's white music. Certain genres just managed to overstep the boundaries and overlaps into the white oh. culture. And some of my music has done that as well. You know, I have a huge white following, which I don't know where the comes from. <laughs> I guess dance music is universal, you know, it doesn't matter what language. The country is, has changed quite a lot since 20 years ago when I started from photography. In my class, I was the only black student. Somebody will just look at me funny and just get pissed off just by looking at me. They can't share a seat with me in a lecture hall. They all will choose to go and sit at the back because the only black people that they were exposed to were like their maids or their gardeners at home. And then you have my son's generation. He's actually fortunate that he didn't have to go through what I had to go through, which goes back to quite to. Y'all ready? Who needs to go first this week? Huh? Sing, you had, you had the hand up. Lord forgive me for my sins. I know I have a lot. The devil's trying to put me down, but I never ever stop. See, I never chose the game. The game chose me. Stay true, never change. Still the same old G. First things first, I love my city till the death. Wait until they see me recognized as the best. In a way, he's living my dream. I never graduated. I was told to quit my studies. They said to me, you have to leave, you have to quit. This is not the right course for black girls. 
I feel like I really need to help because I'm still hating. We're told that whatever that happened in the past should remain there. For us to move on as a nation, we need to not pay attention to any negative stuff that happened. If Mandela can forgive the people who put him in prison for 27 years, who are you not to leave everything in the past and focus on forgiveness? Which is not really fair. I don't know with my child generation, but my generation is still going to linger in our minds for as long as we live. Just put... Best R&B, the Metro, best performer, MTV, uh, best, best performance, Vavos J, best engineer. This one is very interesting. I like it. I don't believe it though, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> With my glass of wow. Since last year, November, I think I've been making a trek kind of like every day. Maybe sometimes two or three, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I pretty much make all the time, you know? Yeah. I would really want to make it perfect this time, especially because I have the opportunity to do it. I still want to prove something, you know? I guess I still want to prove them, you know? I don't know. They're trying to prove your worth, even in your 40s. I have more, I have more to offer. There's more to me than, you know what I'm saying? I haven't done nothing, pretty That's much. That's how I always feel, too. Yeah, I feel like I haven't really done nothing. Being Black being female, it's not really about, about, about that. I don't value it as much as I value what I'm creating now. Yes. You know? For, for me, it wasn't even like, you know, like the apartheid, whatever, whatever, just mm. there. But it was also like where you come from, where you grow up. You're like, well, you know what I'm saying? I, it's not going to amount to nothing. You know, so you're always trying to prove yourself. Yeah. You just so love hungry that you, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're probably gonna feel like that until we die. <laughs> all of them, they could be. The potential next neon soma. All of them, really. They look like they could be. Come here. It's fine. Come. Do you wanna, who wants to be famous here? Who wants to be the next Brenda Fashi? <laughs> you wanna be the next Brenda Fashi? You want to be? I want to be chemical engineer. You want to be a chemical engineer? When I, what chemical engineer? Do you want what kind of engineer do you want to be? <laughs> pilot. You want to be a pilot? Wow! And then when I? I want a nurse. She wants to be a nurse. Chemical engineer, pilot, a nurse, and you? A police woman. A teacher. I want to be a teacher. Maybe my son's generation is that good generation that will be able to, to make sensible decisions. I'm very hungry. I haven't ate breakfast. Yes, man. It's like an event when mommy cooks, 
Cause <laughs> your favorite dish. Yeah, I'm surprised why it's cooked today. Yeah. But it's the best meal ever. How many more leaves on takeouts? If you have a mother like me, who's always on the go, <laughs> you have no choice but to just accept that this is your life. There were times when it was hard, like my first day of school. My mom wasn't there with me yeah. to take me to school and actually be like, bye, I'll fetch you tomorrow. No, um, I'll fetch you after school, no. But it's more like, because I wasn't boarding, so I was put there the day before, then I had to man up. I exposed you to a lot of things. Sometimes I used to feel guilty, I still do. Every parent would like to see their kid, they would want to be a part of their kid's first day at school. That's the one thing that for many years I'd been looking forward to. And when it happened, I couldn't be there. It was not easy, starting out something different. I don't know how many doors I opened, and people were like, sorry, sorry, mm. we can't help you. Only because they had never seen anybody. I had no reference. I wouldn't have achieved what I achieved, that I've achieved. Couldn't even for the support that you gave me. You, know, you were there for me throughout. I've always known you to be a photographer, even though I never really knew what it was, but yeah. I couldn't picture you doing anything else, sitting in the office or anything. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I expect positive things from him that doesn't come with any baggage. The industry in Kwaito today is uh, mostly shallow. The way people describe the life they want to live, but not actually going through what they talk about in these songs. It's not the same. I'm not gonna lie about that. It's not the same. Sometimes I take it off just a little bit, thinking if I'm ever gonna be with a different chick. Hell, hell no, baby girl, you the realest. How you really got My music is like relevant to what I'm going through and real to what I'm going through at the same time. I want to take her to my shows. That's why I'm always working. <laughs> I remember when I had my first mixtape, I mentioned all the things I used to go through in high school. I mentioned things I used to do with my friends at school. Just being straight to the point, honest, yeah. So I guess I'll be in charge. Gotta mention that you touch your body massage. It's amazing. It's something fresh. I never saw the apartheid or anything. I was just born in New South Africa where everything was just good and there was a lot of freedom. We all grew up in a free world. I never got to experience all the trauma that happened, all the hectic tragedy and everything, so I wouldn't say I had a problem growing up. You have the freedom to express yourself. This is the one thing that my parents' generation were deprived of. With our generation, it was, it was better, it was different. We used it as a weapon. Certain people might not have the same benefits as others, but they are free to express themselves. And they're free to open up. How can you express freedom if you don't have self-expression? What freedom will you be striving for? I'm not as angry as I used to be. I've learned to accept things for what they are. Initially, yes, I was bitter. I just come out of apartheid, and I just thought a lot was stolen from me. I just don't want my son to inherit that. My interest in photography grows back to the misrepresentation of the black people, and I've managed to make decisions, changes, that will not only benefit myself, but will benefit my son's future as well. <laughs>